Hey, this is Candle, and you're watching The Vocalist Magazine TV. You can look me up on Google, Facebook, anything, but it's Candle with a K. Hey guys, and welcome to The Vocalist Magazine TV. My name is Claire Lowen, and today we are here with the very talented musician, Candle. How are you today? You nailed that intro. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm glad to hear it. I'm really good too. So today we want to get into everything about your music. So let's start with going way far back and finding out how you got involved in music in the first place. Well, it was kind of by accident. I grew up in a musical family. My dad's a musician and I was surrounded by festivals and studios, but I did not think I was going to be a musician. I couldn't sing for a very long time. And around the age of 16, I started getting some guys in high school to teach me, you know, like different Nirvana songs and stuff, because I just thought it'd be cool to play. And somehow in that time, I realized that I could also write a song. And it just started growing from there and getting better. And I just decided to teach myself how to sing. For sure. It's hard. What other instruments do you play other than uh, guitar? That's it, though I pretend to play things okay, sometimes. Okay, for sure. I try, fake it. Doesn't always go well. So I saw on your Facebook page that you described your music as indie swamp rock. Mm -hmm. So did you write that? And like, I kind of just want to know, how would you describe your music now? Well, it's funny because I have no idea. And people call us all different things and pop noir folk indie rock <laughs> alternative. I'm like, yeah. whatever, it's, it's music. Mm -hmm. Call it what you want. You don't think it needs to be defined. It's just, it no. just sounds I mean, good. sometimes it's easy. You listen to Katy Perry, you're like, that is pop. But I listen to myself and I'm like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard for someone to define their own music. Absolutely. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I know you've been in Montreal for a majority of your career. So do you feel, I don't know, how do you feel about the city and music and like, how do you think the city has influenced your musical style? It's the most supportive place I've ever lived and I don't think I would have started my career if I hadn't moved to Montreal. Mm -hmm. I, I was always kind of scared to talk to really successful people. I didn't take myself seriously as a musician. Yeah. And as soon as I moved here, you know, I got to open for Sam Roberts and Coda Pirat. I started a band with Sam Gold from, from Broken Social mm -hmm. Scene and like he brought in all his cool friends. Yeah. None of that would have happened anywhere else. Yeah. Like, right now we have Tim Fletcher from The Stills in the band and I, I don't amazing. know why, <laughs> but it's great. Because the talent finds itself, you know? Well, it's a small, nice music community here and, and we support each other and yeah. in a lot of other cities I've been to. The artists are competitive and mm -hmm. they, they don't like when the other bands do well and everyone's you know, trying to get ahead, but here everyone, you know, they have each other's backs. It's all about collaboration, yeah. for sure. That's really cool. So yeah, my next question was actually how did you get involved with all of those collaborations, but I guess you just answered that. Just <laughs> do you think, um, do you plan on staying in Montreal, or do you think as you grow more fame you would move somewhere like Toronto, New York, I don't know? Uh, I have no idea what the future will bring. Montreal is definitely home right now, and especially in terms of success, like where we're mm -hmm. doing well, but it's hard. My family's not here. My boyfriend's not here. My dog's not here. Oh my god! It's like this big hole in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. The band likes it because I keep writing sad songs. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm always sad, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's good for creativity. Yeah. <laughs> if I was too happy, then the music would end. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so you'd say most of your your home base would be back in back in BC. Mm, probably more like over? Toronto. Oh, That's okay. where my sister, my boyfriend, a lot of my friends are. Okay. But I'm not ready for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Not yet. <laughs> not at all. Toronto can be a little overwhelming for sure. Yeah, it doesn't feel like home. So I want to talk to you about your video for Not Up To Me. So there's a clip at the end where you say, to help a girl believe in herself and realize she matters, visit canadianwomen.org. So I kind of just want to talk to you a little bit about like that organization and how you, you got involved with them. Uh, it started with the song itself is about a girl very close to me that was dealt with some issues with abuse and suicide and depression and just realizing the statistics in girls today and how like, especially with social media and stuff today, girls are, are bullied, they're peer pressured and 
they blame themselves. Yeah. And Canadian Women's Foundation is a great organization that helps these girls, has amazing programs, like getting them to feel confident and comfortable and coming forward and things. And so I just wanted the video to mean something. I didn't want people to look at it and be like, oh, cool, two girls underwater. Like, it has so much more meaning yeah. than that. So luckily they were on board, and I just hope that more people will check out this site and help help our girls. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a really, really beautifully shot video. I like truly, yes, really enjoyed it. Yes. Yeah, I, it like, gave me some feels, for sure. <laughs> um. So let's talk about your last album, In Flames, which came out in March. Well, I actually want to talk about more where you're at now. Um, how do you think your songwriting has changed since that album came out? Um, I feel like musically I just keep, I keep progressing. I feel stronger and more confident as a writer. Like, whereas the first EP was an experiment and a test if I could sing at all. <laughs> and then by the time I did In Flames, I, I felt I had my voice, I had my style, and, mm -hmm. and now I just feel really excited and inspired and yeah. probably going to produce the next one myself with Sam. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Wait, Sam from Broke, Broken Social Scene or Sam, Sam Roberts? Broken Social okay. Scene. He's a <laughs> band leader in our camp. Right. Wait, what's your band called again? They call themselves The Crooks. So it's Candle and The Crooks. Yeah, they okay. didn't like saying that they play in Candle. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, oh, yeah. Sounds raunchy. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, as an artist in this day and age, I mean, a lot of stuff is changing from even, you know, five, ten years ago with social media and, um, you know, stealing music, etc. I saw that you, you had some, some quote on your website that was like, steal our music, share it, we don't care, we just want to be heard, right? So, saying that, I mean, what would you say is like one of the challenges that you face in this day and age as an artist? Uh, I think it's, it's a lot easier than it's ever been to make music. Now people yeah. can make records on their laptop by themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's more and more genres becoming popular all over the place. There's not, you know, the Beatles is popular. That doesn't matter anymore. No. It's so much. So it's really hard to get yourself heard by the masses when there's millions of fans everywhere trying to do exactly the mm -hmm. same thing. Uh, money is always tight and what used to be a sellout, like getting your song in a commercial, say in the 90s, like, oh, bro, you totally sold out. Now, yeah. that's our only chance for survival. Definitely. Like, if McDonald's called me today, I'd be like, yes, I can pay my rent, man. <laughs> so it's, it's a yeah. challenge. Like, album sales, whatever, it's great if people, and people do buy the records, that's great, but I also don't mind if someone wants to hear music, doesn't have the money, and steals it. Mm -hmm. Cool. They'll um, still end up probably buying a ticket to our show, you know? Like, for sure. Okay. On a bit of a brighter note, what would you say um, has been your greatest accomplishment up to date in music? Um, excellent question. It's kind of like a weird one, but it was the time I was most excited was uh, the first time and the second time that we got to play Oceaga. It's the first time I felt like at the same level as as other musicians that I've looked up to and realized like, wow, I could actually do this. Yeah. And walking by the backstage area and being like, Nick Cave is here. <laughs> oh yeah. Don't cry. Keep it cool. Mm -hmm. So that that probably. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like being on the same level as your as your idols must yeah. be a really I good mean, feeling. That I opened for Nick Cave, but we played like seven hours before him and on a different <laughs> stage, but in my But you opened. Mm -hmm. I opened for Nick. You did it. Does he know I exist? No? Maybe. Maybe he'll see the video. <laughs> One day. <laughs> okay, so, um, one of my last questions for you is what would you have, uh, what would you give as advice for someone who wants to get into the music industry? Don't do it. Go to school. <laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> if you do it, it's got to be for the right reasons. You have to absolutely love it. There has to be nothing else that you think might make you happy. Because it consumes your life. You're going to be broke. You're going to cry. You're going to be hurt. You're putting your soul out there for people to comment and say, I hate this, or she's ugly Taylor Swift, whatever. People are mean and ruthless. Yeah. And you have to be doing it because you love it that much, or else it'll destroy you. Yeah. So yeah, don't do it. Unless. Because Unless. Mm -hmm. it's hard. For sure. It's terrible advice. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely some good slash terrible advice. Yeah. <laughs> Same advice my father gave me, Great. but I didn't listen. No, well, there you go. Sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah.
So what's coming up in the future for Candle? A few things. We've got a new video coming out next week. Um, we have some tour dates we'll be releasing where I get to go all the way back home to BC to play, which is fun. We are playing a free show here in Montreal for the Folk Fest on June 19th. Oh, that's coming up. Sweet. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. very excited about that. Yeah. We love playing at home. For sure, yeah. It's so fun. Oh, and that's all that I remember. I'm secretly starting the next record. But okay, no little tidbits we can find out about that? No. Nope. <laughs> you so sure? First, me and my guitar and my computer. Some stuff? I'm the only one that's <laughs> exclusive, so exclusive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for being here with us today, Candle. I'm Claire for the Vocalist Magazine TV. We'll catch you later. <laughs>